Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I want to show you a cable tool that is controlled by the Python viewer stains. So this video is focused for more experienced users with Houdini who are looking into using the Python viewer stains. So with the Python viewer stains, we can make our digital assets or HTA more interactable. So in this case, I'm going to control this multi-parameter by clicking my mouse. So every time I click my mouse, I will add a position where my cable should start or should go. So let's say I want to start my cable from here. So I'm going to click here and I want to have my cable going through my first geometry here. And you can see it automatically creates this cable and I can continue here to this piece, for example. And if I hold my mouse, I can then redirect where my cable should go. So you can see it's getting a quite interactable way of creating this cable. And this is just a normal digital asset with a Python viewer state on top of it. So that's the main goal here is to use these viewer states to add more interactability with our digital assets. Here's another example of the tool. So I used the sci-fi building, which I also have a tutorial from. And in here, I just used the cable tool to then quickly make these cables around the house, which is then very easily done with this tool. So now let's jump into it. To start with, of course, I'm going to create a geometry network. So in here, and I'm going to create an add node in there. And from this add node, I want to immediately use it as a digital asset. So I'm going to collapse it into a network, right click, create digital asset. And I'm going to call this something like demo, demo Python cable tool. So here's our digital asset. And what is interesting here is if we go to the interactive tab, we have here a viewer state options. So this is actually here where I would write my code, my Python code. So we can press new over here and we can already start adding some of these Python codes. So press new and here are some samples. So in this case, I want to use actually the add to add the add points option, but you can check out these other ones as well and see how they interact with the Houdini assets. So just click accept and it will create a code. So here at the top, we have instructions on how to use this preset. So every time you would load a preset, it will have some instructions on how to use it. So in this case, it's actually focusing on the add sub. So we already have this node and it then further tells you what to do with it. So what it basically tells us to do is to go to the parameter menu and we need to expose the properties of the add node. So I already put the add node actually in the red color because it's going to be controlled by a viewer state. So I know that I have to be careful with this node and not just simply delete it. So I'm going to drag and drop this parameter here. So this multi-parameter and every time I click, it will create this value. So press apply and you can see now it is linked and we can already start testing this out. So when I go back to my HDA level, and I select this handle, I'm now able to actually place around these points. So as you can see, we have now an option to place points. So what we can do for the moment is we can, for example, use a copy to points and we can copy paste a box on these points. So we have a good view on what's happening. So every time I click, I'm going to place down a box. So this could be another tool already to quickly place boxes or other items. Paul from SideFX actually already made a placement tool that works similar like this. But if you want to get creative yourself, you can make this yourself as well. So for the moment, we can only place these boxes on the grid level. But I would like to have an object to intersect with. So let's say I have another box here and I want this box to be my input of my HD and have an intersection when I click and place my points. So let's go here to the options of the HDA. And in here, we're going to add a option for our inputs. So we can actually plug in this box and I'm actually going to just make this box a bit different Then here. I'm simply going to merge this result together. And I'm also going to create an output node just to be sure it's always outputting the full network. So in here, when I click my mouse, we don't, we can see there is no interaction between these geometries. So I'm going to have to go back to my Python code and make some few changes there. So let's again, open this menu. 
I'm going to go to the interactive tab and we're going to scroll down where we have our real Python code. So there are two main things we want to focus on is first of all, I want to write code to get information on what is my input. So I want to get that box that I just input. And then I want to have the option to have intersection between the geometry and my mouse. To help us even more out, I'm going to use the documentation of side effects. So in here, what I'm actually looking for is intersection with geometry. And we can already see the function here that handles the intersection. And this is also what it is returning. So it's very important to check always what the function is returning. And here is an example of how to use this code. And we're basically going to make something that's very similar like this already. So what they're doing here in this example is they're creating a geometry now, a geometry variable, so they can store information in this variable. Then they are on enter, will check if they are inputs. So check the nodes if they are inputs. And if they are inputs, I would like to store my input from zero, from zero, so the first input into my geometry node. And this is exactly what we need to do as well to get this geometry. And then when we have my geometry, I can then use the intersection data and then store this as well. So in here at the beginning, at the init, I would like to have self geometry. So this is a variable I can then ask in other networks. Then here, when we enter the viewer state, so basically when you click this icon here, we enter a viewer state, I want to ask this information. So here I'm going to write input is equal to my node dot input. So basically just gathering an array of all the inputs. Then I want to check on this input. So if inputs and inputs one, inputs one. So basically if we have an input, I want to store this input in that geometry variable I just made. And I want to store, of course, the first input. And to get the geometry information, we're going to just type dot geometry, and we will get the geometry from that first input. So here, if you want to have all the geometry as collision or intersection, you're going to have to change this code. So here we are only focusing on getting the input from this information. Then we're going to scroll down here, and we, here we have the mouse events. So here's already some explanation. So find the position of the points to add intersection by the construction plane. So here, this is actually handling the placement of where my point should be. So this is intersection with the construction plane. So I want to change this to the geometry intersections function. So if I would go here back to this documentation, this is actually what I'm looking for. So I'm going to copy paste this. This can be in comments for now. And let's place this over here. So I cleaned it a little bit up. So here, if we have geometry, calculate the sub intersection with the geometry and our rays and our ray direction. So these two values are actually undefined. So we don't have them. That is because here we are actually calling them origin and direction. So we can just copy paste this here as well. So it's important to stay consistent with these namings because by default they are created like this. So they are automatically gathering this information here. And also important here, it will, this function will return four different values. So the hit, the position, the normal, and the UVB. So we are mostly interested in the position. So here we are already actually working with a value called position and it's typed fully position. So I'm going to make sure that this is called position as well, because later on, when I move on to my code, this is when I press my left mouse button, I'm going to store the position in the value. So I'm going to make sure these namings are correct. So this is how you can set a certain parameter from your HDA. And then we just set position. What will also be important here to make everything work is this suit dot so we need this here as well and now i'm going to press apply it should normally work and let's test and i made a little mistake here 
we don't have note defined yet so i'm just going to type here in front self dot note and pressing apply now this should work and as you can see now we have an intersection and now we have an intersection between the input box and my mouse so i can now for example use the test geometry like the pig head i can plug this in over here maybe scale this a bit up and now when i click my mouse your intersection with this geometry so notice also when i come outside of this geometry it suddenly goes away my cube but if you look closely i think the example is better when i took my default cube so when i go outside it's actually going to the center here so every time i go outside it's going to the middle of the world so it's just going to be 0, 0, 0. So we'll be changing the Python code again. So we don't have the position 0, 0, 0 when I'm outside my, my geometry. If I go back here to the documentation, we have here our function called sub geometry intersection. And here it returns these four values. And the first value is what I'm interested in. It says here, so it can give the primitive number. But when it doesn't hit any primitive, it's going to return minus 1. So I'm going to write an if statement that if it, the hit is minus 1, I just, I just switch to another intersection mode. So if hit equals minus 1, then I would like to use here my original intersection method. So let's place that over here and press apply. So now when I click my mouse, I can have still intersection with my cube here. And if I don't have any intersection with my cube, it's just going to align with my grid, as you could see. So I can, can still, for example, here go up and down. But as soon as I don't have an intersection, I'm just going to align with my grid. And this is basically all the Python codes that I need now for adding this cable tool, or you can make other tools with it. As you could see here, we can do a lot of different things with this tool. We have basic information and we can handle this information to make whatever tool that you want. So I mentioned at the beginning, this video is focused for more experienced users. So from here, you can get creative and build whatever you want from this. So in the next minutes, I'm just gonna quickly go over the cable or how I made a cable. So here is the base setup that I use for my cable. So it's a pretty simple setup that I made. So first of all, here we have our inputs so or add points. So if you're wondering how to get this line here in the add point, I'm just using the groups. So by default, you will have this. But if you go here in the group, by just selecting this, it will connect them automatically. Then I'm going to use the convert line, which will break each which will break each line into a single primitive. So here they were all connected. So then here I'm doing a for each primitive. So of course we have here a few primitives. So just use the normal for each primitive here. Then I'm going to do a resample and I'm going to use the maximum segments here and fill in two. This will basically create a middle point of the line. So you can see here it creates its middle point. And the middle point is always called number one. And I can trust this so much that I can basically use this here in a group. So I can just ask number one and set this to points and I can just drag this point down. Now in here, since we are using a loop, I have my basic gravity value and I'm going to multiply it by a random value based on my for each loop iteration. So I'm going to get the details from my for each loop and I want to get the iteration number. So if you were wondering how to get this extra node here, is just click here on the import metadata node. Then you will create this node and then you can ask the iteration number. And now I'm going to do another resample. And this is here with then a subdivision curve just to make it super smooth. You can set this to other options as well, depending on what you would like to see. So this will then happen for each individual line. And as a result, we then have sort of this gravity feel in there. So this transform basically controls how much of this gravity there will be on each cable. 
Now, when the result is complete, I'm going to fuse them. I'm going to do a polypath, which will create one primitive from this again. So in here, I only have number zero. Then I'm going to use a face node. This is basically cleaning up the lines. As you can see here, we had a lot of points and this will clean up the lines here with this value called remove in point lines. Then here, I'm going to use the lab cable tool. So of course, make sure we are having the lab tools installed. And then we have these cables from the lab tools. Like when you just plug it in, it should already work, as you can see here. And then we can, for example, start increasing the, the radius of the cable. Like I want my cable to be more thicker. We can start changing, for example, the smoothness. So it goes a bit more to my original curve. And you can play around with these values and get results that are more looking to what you want. So this tool really helps a lot with just creating the cable feeling in there. Then further, I move it. I move it a little bit. Just I notice that that gives a little bit better results. And then just placing down normals, combining results, and then we have a simple cable tool. So in here, I can go back up here. I can delete all my points, and I can start placing around cables. So you can see it's a quite easy way to add cables, add, um, add objects or environments. And you can, of course, make this tool even better. Like this is just a demonstration of how to get this more interactive. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and special thanks to the patrons.